We welcome you to St. Michael the Archangel Parish as we celebrate Mass of the Christian Burial and Life of Joanne Slumsky. You may have received a program as you entered the church today. All the congregation music and many of the Mass responses are listed there, as well as on the large screens on the front wall. We encourage your participation in this liturgy. Now please stand and face to the rear of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Beloved friends, in the waters of baptism, Joanne died with Christ and rose with him to newness of life. May she now share with Christ, Christ's eternal glory. At baptism, John was signed with the cross, the sign of Christ's victory over death. May Christ now welcome her with these words. Come you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Our entrance song is Be Not Afraid. Across the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know.
you to be seated. I now invite Dr. John Slomsky to come and share some words of remembrance. Hello, I'm John, the oldest. I'd like to thank everybody for coming here. Um, I'll give you a little history. My mom was born Joanne Bolivan, August 5th, 1937. She remained a Bolivan for 20 years till she met my father. She then became Mrs. John Slomsky. She was only, to me, she was that for two years because I didn't know her. Once, she, once I was born, she became mom. Next 30 years, she was mother. She was my mom. Alexa was born. She had to remake herself over. She retold. She became Mimi. And I think everybody here knows her as Mimi more than anything else. Her sidekick was Pop Up, and she lost him probably a couple, three years ago. I did learn another fact yesterday that in Pelican Cove, Pelican's Landing, she was known as Zsa Zsa. Her friend Betty gave her that nickname. I don't know, a lot of people here know who Zsa Zsa Gabor is. I, I think my, my mom more is being Eva Gabor. I'd be remiss if I did not thank everyone who helped her stay in her home, who took care of her and loved her for these past several months. My sister Jill, my brother Jeff, the time and effort they put in is, I, I can never thank you enough. I was in Columbus leading my life the way I needed, well, the, I was in Columbus, that's all I can say. I tried to help when I could, but what they did was phenomenal. I want to thank hospice, the nurses with hospice, the aides, family members here who came and took care of her, Laura for taking care of her the last seven to 10 days. I have two quick stories. I got to spend 24 hours with her by myself two weeks ago, probably the first time I've been with her for 24 hours since my brother was born. Um, her wound was leaking, draining, it needed change, so went back in her bedroom and got her cleaned up. I got her a pair of pants. What do you think, Mimi? She said, they're fine. She, I said, okay, I'm gonna get you a shirt. I picked the shirt up off. She said, nope, doesn't match. I got another shirt, no. She goes, I want the white shirt. Picked up another shirt, it was white. No, not that one. I said, Mimi, no one's gonna see, no one cares. And she turned around, looked at it, and she goes, I care. I got a shirt, she goes, that's the one. It had a plaque or flower in front. She goes, that goes in the front. I said, I know that. <laughs> so till the end, she cared about what she looked like and she always wanted to present herself well. Uh, the last day I saw her on Sunday or Saturday, she was very tired. She was sitting on the chair and she said, Johnny Michael, she picked up a book. She goes, I have 11 phone calls to make tomorrow. And I go, what? She goes, 11 people. I haven't returned 11 phone calls, which made me think how important all her friends were to her and how important it was for her to stay in touch with those people. The last couple days, my phone has not stopped. It, the text messages, the calls, 
I, I, just unbelievable. The messages were all the same about Mimi. It made me feel good that I had so many close friends, and it also made me feel good that Mimi was loved. So I'm going to finish with one of those text messages which I received. It sums up all the text messages and what they said. The reason I've chosen this one is because it's the only one that made me actually cry. I'm so sorry, John. You have no idea how much I loved your mom. What a beautiful woman inside and out. She was so good to me. Tears running down my cheek as I write this. Love my brother. Condolences. Thank you. Please may we stand. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your daughter, Joan, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And now invite Jack. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. God has made everything appropriate to its time. I recognize that there is nothing better than to be glad and doing well during life I recognize that whatever God does will endure forever. The word of the Lord. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Of faithfulness and love, I walk. 
walk by the quiet waters of Second reading, we invite Kelly. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. If, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. My dear friends, today we have come together to celebrate the life of Joanne. I want to thank in a special way Joanne and her husband for making things easy for me today. I am very bad with names. So, but I, can't, I, I didn't find it difficult to remember the JJs. John, Jill, Jeff, the children of Joanne and John. So today, I want to stand on behalf of our parish family, our deepest condolences to you. And all the, uh, her grandchildren and great-grandchild and friends who are here. You know, in the Bible, Jesus says that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my heavenly Father. In Matthew 7, 21. The question is, how do we live a life doing the will of our Heavenly Father? The answer to this big question today is given in the Gospel, the Beatitudes, where Jesus gives his followers a roadmap to happy eternity. All the saints in heaven walk the hard and narrow path of the Beatitudes to arrive at the heavenly bliss. The Beatitudes propose to us a way of life inviting us to identify with the poor with those who suffer, the meek, and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. The Beatitudes challenge us to be compassionate people, to be men and women who are pure in heart. 
they challenge us to become peacemakers in our dealings with one another, in our families, in our society. Even when those approach expose us to ridicule and to persecution. When we read the lives of the saints, we know that none of the saints, in we read their lives, had it at their first priority to amass wealth, to acquire power or popularity. Rather, they look forward to the eternal reward which God gives his faithful people at the end of this shortly or this short earthly life of illusion. The question I ask me, and I want to ask all of us is, how are we living the life of the Beatitudes in our dealings with one another? How are we walking that way of the Beatitudes Even when we know people will criticize us. Even when we know people will insult us. Are we walking the way of the beatitude, focusing on God himself? Why did I choose this passage of the scripture, the beatitudes? It was after talking with the family. They told me that John was a peacemaker. She was a peacemaker. A woman who never held grudge. And that's how I felt that this passage of the scripture touches to the life we have come to celebrate. Therefore, today we have come to celebrate the life of a saint who walked the way of the Beatitudes, and her name is Joanne Slomsky. The way she walked the life of the saints before her is narrow and hard. We all need faith to do it. You know, St. Augustine St. Augustine read the lives of the saints and then read how they lived the life of the Beatitudes. And then he challenged himself, he said, if these ordinary men and women could do it, why not me? Joanne lived the life of the Beatitudes by being a loving mother, Thank you, Dr. John, for telling us about your mom. Telling us about the last message you sent to her. She was a loving mother. A grandma who left all she could do and went to the sports events of her grandchildren, identified with them. She lived the life of the Beatitudes by her faith in God. She was a Eucharistic, member, uh, Eucharistic minister of her parish. She lived the life of the beatitude with generous heart. Welcomed friends and was compassionate. I 
I have been called for sick calls many times. Hundreds of times. Going to people who are on their way out of this world. I have never seen where friends come together to be their friend goodbye. But in the case of Joanne, her family was there. Her circle of friends were there. Because of the way she associated and lived with them. My dear friends, one thing I know is that faith assures us all that all who heed the call of Jesus and live the life of the beatitude, that the end of life they shall together with the saints hear the consoling words of the Lord who says, well done, good and faithful servant, enter the kingdom or the joys of your master. Joanne, as a peacemaker in a special way, we read in the scriptures, blessed are the peacemakers because they will be called the children of God. A child of God has gone before us, has gone back to her master. Let us then celebrate her life. And most importantly, keep alive in our lives those important qualities we knew of her. She would want us to keep them alive Anytime we remember her, let us continue to spread those good qualities. And with that, we can change the world. We can transform the world. Finally, to her family and friends. Family was very important to her. You were there for her every step of the way. You were the best family she could ever ask for. Keep up that unity of family and love amongst yourself. A big legacy your family, mother and father left for you as we stand and pray. I now invite Alexa for the petitions. God, the Father Almighty, raise Christ his son from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, both the living and the dead. For Mimi who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, may she now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of Mimi's family and friends, may they find consolation and peace, healing for their sorrow, and strength in their faith, we pray. For Mimi's loved ones and friends who have gone before her, and for all the deceased members of the Slomsky and Bullivan families, May they be united in an everlasting home, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the caregivers from Crossroads Hospice and Home Instead Home Care and all who care for others, may Christ the healer strengthen them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are gathered here today and those who are un unable to be here, when we come to the end of our allotted days, may we, with Mimi, be welcomed into the arms of God's mercy, we pray. Lord, hear prayer. Lord, 
God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of your people, forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we invite John, Jill, and Jeff to go and bring up the gifts. As our gifts are prepared, let us join in singing Prayer of St. Francis. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your daughter, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior, may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, though this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your daughter, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we blessed yourself as spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Throwing him and with in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we say to you, apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other God's sign of peace.
Catholics who are receiving communion, please come forward in the center aisle and return by the side aisles. Those who are not receiving are welcome to come forward and receive a blessing. As you approach the Eucharistic minister, crossing your arms across your chest will indicate your intention for a blessing. My dear friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only through the word of Jesus Christ. As we come together in communion, let's join in singing Amazing Grace. Sing God. 
Let us pray. Lord God, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I think the family would want to welcome us after we come back from the cemetery at the Panam Center. Please, we invite all who can. The Panam Center is, uh, I'm poor in giving directions, so don't trust my direction, but out of this church, make a left straight on. You see a hall there, that's the Panam Center. <laughs> you find your way there. <laughs> Dear friends, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Lord, come towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your daughter and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our sister. We make our prayers to Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved friends, let us take our sister to her final place of rest. Grant may the angels lead you into paradise. May the holy martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. I 
to his angels, he's leading a command. 